Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Um, today I wanted to let you know that I went ahead and bit the bullet and I traded in my 2004 uh, Volkswagen Jetta for an EV. Alright, what I got is I got a 2023 Nissan Leaf. Alright, this Nissan Leaf is the Model S. Uh, there is also a, a Model SV Plus, I believe it is, uh, which has a bigger battery range and it has a lot more tech in it, um, but it's also $10,000 more. So I wanted to get the least expensive EV that I could find that is brand new. And now I know what you're all thinking. You're like, okay, uh, well, that's great that you got an electric car. What does that have to do with off-grid or off-grid basement? Well. Of course, I got an electric car and the first thing I thought of was, how can I charge this car uh, through an off-grid source? So, the first off-grid source that I'm gonna show you is just one single 12 volt battery connected to an inverter that will be able to charge this car. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, what I have in the trunk of my car is everything that you're gonna need to give you you know, maybe 10 miles of range. So this will be like the emergency backup in case you're just a few miles away from your charger or your home where you can charge it up and you just need that little bit of extra mileage in the form of electricity. So let's open up the trunk and I'll show you everything we got. Okay, here is everything that you need in order to charge your car from a 12 volt source. What you need is a, you need a giant battery, you need a big inverter, you need your charger. Um, I like to have a little two foot uh, uh, cable to be able to plug in my charger to my inverter. Um, and you're also going to need a uh, generator neutral ground bonding plug uh, if, your, if your inverter is a, has a floating neutral, which this one does. So let's go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and wire this all up and we'll see, uh, we'll see if it works and we'll see what kind of power is actually being drawn to the car from this setup. So let's go ahead and hook it all up. Okay, so we got everything finally hooked up. It took about five minutes. And what we have is the SunFun Kits. It's a 275 amp hour, 12 volt battery. You need a, a pretty big battery if you're doing it with just one battery because it needs to be able to handle a minimum of 150 amps. So that's why I chose this one. Um, you can also go with two 100 amp batteries in parallel and that will, as long as they can handle 100 amps each, um, it will divide it between those two batteries, so you'll be safe with that also. But for this demonstration, we're using just one battery. We also have it connected with a two gauge cable, and the positive has a 150 amp fuse attached to it. Because again, we're gonna need, we're not gonna, we're not gonna go over 150 amps, so I wanna protect these wires. These two gauge wires are probably actually too small for this application. I would suggest actually one aught cable or higher. So two gauge cable is probably the minimum you wanna go. And you definitely wanna have a fuse just for safety purposes. Uh, after that, we have the 5,000 watt X, MX Moon Free inverter. Uh, it's a 12 volt inverter. I chose the 5,000 watt one because I just don't wanna worry about whether this inverter can power uh, the charge to my car. I believe you can actually use a 2000 watt inverter for this application, but that's probably about as low as you wanna go when it comes to the amount of power that your inverter can handle. All right, and next I have just a little two foot long uh, extension cord. You wanna make sure and have a heavy duty extension cord. This is a, a 12 slash three, so it has 12 gauge wire inside. I chose to get one that has uh, three prongs on it, uh, just for the fact that um, I'm, I'm gonna need to be able to plug in my 
a neutral ground bonding plug into it. So that, that's why I chose this. Um, that, and, and I wanted to do that just to show you that it can be done from there. Uh, or if you have, you see on the front of the inverter, I have multiple plugs and I can also plug in that neutral bond plug into one of these plugs as well. But there are inverters out there that only have one AC outlet. So that's why I wanted to show you that you can plug it into your short extension cord as well. Do not just go out and get an ordinary extension cord that's like 16 gauge wire because uh, it will get hot. And you have to remember that this setup, you're not gonna be just charging it for 10 minutes. It's not like that. You're charging it using a 110 outlet. So if you need this setup, you need to make sure that all of your wiring and all of your equipment is heavy duty uh, because it's gonna be need to be running for an hour or two to, to really get what you need out of it. Okay, and last but not least, we have our Nissan charger, which uh, have, it has the adapter for just your regular uh, house outlets. So it looks just like that, just like what, what everything else that you plug into your house. All right, so Keats is gonna go ahead and plug everything in. And press as hard as you can, there shouldn't be any space. There you go, perfect. Okay, so that's plugged into that. And let's see what happens if we don't use a neutral ground plug right here. Or, I'm sorry, a neutral ground bonding plug. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn on our inverter. And also, when it comes to inverters, you want to use uh, pure sine wave. Uh, you don't want to use modified sine wave because it could damage your charger. So, okay, first of all, let's plug this in. Let's, pl let's plug in our Nissan charger without using the neutral ground plug. Okay, and you can see right there that this light should be a solid green. We don't have a fault, and the power means that there's actually power going to the car, but this green light should be solid. If it's blinking like that, it means that there is an issue with your plug. And that issue is that it is a floating neutral. So you need to be able to ground that neutral, and I suggest getting one of these plugs. Because as soon as you plug this in, let's just go ahead and plug it in over here, the light turns green. And that, that's because your charger now sees that this, this uh, outlet is grounded. And so if you unplug it, it automatically goes into like an air mode. And just to show you, we can also plug it in right here. and it does the same thing. It's ready to go. But for this demonstration, let's just go ahead and plug it in right over here. Okay, and now this is all complete and ready to go. So the last thing we need to do is actually just plug it into the car and let it start charging. Let's do it. Okay, we have everything all hooked up now. We have our battery connected to our inverter and our inverter turned on and plugged into our charger. So, Keats, you want to go ahead and grab the charging wand and let's plug it into the car. Let's do it. Okay, let's go ahead and open up the uh, charging bay. Flip that, there you go. All right, we got the car plugged in. And you can tell it's charging by the lights right there. That's a, those are charging indicator lights that show that the car is now charging. And it is charging from this 12 volt battery right here. So let's actually see how much energy this battery is uh, being depleted. Let's, uh, let's turn on our Sun Fun Kits app. We're gonna select the OGB battery and hit connect. Okay. And in the battery app, you can actually see that we are, uh, 
we're using 1,630 watts from this battery. So that's 134 amps. So that is why you want to use a battery that has a minimum uh, discharge rate of 150 amps. Or like I said, you can use two 100 amp batteries uh, in parallel to achieve that. Um, and also your inverter needs to be able to handle uh, the 1,620 watts as well. Uh, so that's why I believe a 2,000 watt inverter could pull this off. But then, I have one question. What's that, Keats? What if the, the light is kind of orange, orange oh, and yellow? Why, that light right there? Mm -hmm. This light right here is showing that the car is actually charging. So that means that there's power going to the car right now. So yeah, we're doing it. We are using this SunFun Kids battery along with this inverter plugged in to my car charger, which is plugged into my car, which is receiving a charge, as you can tell by the charge indicator lights right there. Okay, so Keats, the next question is, what, how long will it take to deplete this battery and how much energy will we actually get to the car? Well, let's figure that out. Let's go ahead and pull up the, uh, the, the SunFun Kids app again. And you can see that since we're using 134 amps right now, that means that every hour the battery is going to be depleted by 134 amps. And since the battery is 275 amps, we should be able to get right around two hours of charging time from this one battery. Okay, and some other numbers that you might wanna know. Uh, like I said, we'll be able to charge, we'll, we'll be able to get two hours of charge out of this battery. And out of that, and from that two hours of charge that we're gonna get, this battery is a 3.6 kilowatt battery. Now, that means that since I have a 40 kilowatt battery in my car, that's going to give me, um, what, about eight or nine percent uh, into, my, into my car. And my car is rated at, uh, if, I, if I have a full charge, I can get about 150 miles. So if you take eight or nine percent of 150, um, you get, you know, I would say, uh, safely say you can get about 10 miles of range. You can get about 10 miles of range from this setup right here. So, I mean, that's, that's perfect for if you're uh, in a dire emergency and you're only a few miles away from a charging station, uh, this setup right here can be a lifesaver. Another thing that we probably wanna talk about is the cost of this. Now, that battery alone down there, that battery, I wanna say it's $1,200, I'm guessing. I'll, show, I'll put the price uh, right down here for the for the day of filming this video, which is um, May 13th, 2023. Um, but yeah, I'm guessing that battery is at least 1200 bucks. That's pretty expensive. I would say if you really wanted to have this situation, I would get two uh, inexpensive 100 amp batteries. You can get those for like $300 a piece, just as long as they can discharge at 100 amps each. That way you put them in parallel, that's 200 amps that it can be discharged and you're good to go. That inverter, I wanna say it's probably about uh, between four and $500. And then the, the neutral ground bonding plug, that was like 15. So overall, you're looking at like, you're looking at like $2,000 for this setup right here. And you're probably thinking, that's pretty expensive. That's ridiculous. But just think how much it costs to tow an EV. Uh, I mean, if you're, only, if you're only like five minutes, five minutes away, if you're five miles away from a charging station and you need to have it towed, uh, you need to look that up. Because I think for me, uh, it would cost me about 500 bucks just to tow my car. Okay, with all that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, if you have any questions about the setup that I have, or uh, the reasons for doing it, 
uh, please leave them in the comments. Um, thank you so much again for watching this video, and you all have a great day. Bye-bye. And guys, please subscribe. We're so close to 3,000 subscribers. <laughs> Thanks, Keats. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.